Hey everyone, today we're going to be making a helicopter game and this is going to be part one of two. This is what the end result is going to look like of part one. This game is going to pull together a lot of the concepts of uh, Swift UI. If you're just starting, a lot of the basics are going to come together and we're going to be able to build a game. So if you start a new project, call it anything like helicopter, for example, and we'll get started. So we're going to start by creating a new folder or a new group and we're going to call it components. We're going to have three components of this game and we'll start one by one, create a new Swift file and call it a pixel. We want to go for a pixel look in this game. So it's, e it's good to have one struct that is a pixel. It's going to be of type view and it's going to have only a couple of properties. A pixel is a very simple unit that we'll use to build the rest of the game. So it's a size and it's going to have a color. We're going to then, uh, because it's a type view destruct, we need to have a variable which is called body, which is some view, and we're going to output a rectangle, which is our pixel, quote unquote, and it's going to have a width, which is uh, the size vari uh, variable that we have, and the height is also going to be the size. We're going to make the foreground, and don't forget to make the size a CG float instead of an integer. Uh, that should work. Foreground color, we're going to uh, use color. Uh, and so <clears throat> that's going to create our pixel. And we're going to use this to then build the rest of the game. If you go back to content view, you can delete everything um, and plug in this pixel, which we've now created, give it a size of 50 and a color of, let's say, red. And if we build our app now, it should uh, uh, make sure you use a newer version of iPhone, uh, like the 11 Pro Max to make sure, and flip it sideways because um, we'll be using a sideways view for the game, but you can see the red pixel that we've created here based on this component that we put together. Let's make our second component. This one's going to be the helicopter, and this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's going to use the pixel that we just created to make a helicopter this kind of like a pixel art helicopter. And it's going to be a struct, call it helicopter of type view. Again, we need to have a variable called body and that's some view. And here what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a helicopter um, sort of, um, not coordinates, but blocks. So this is going to be an array of arrays and each uh, uh, component, uh, each part of an, uh, or the array is going to contain a bunch of colors. And you can think of this as a grid. So we're going to make a grid that is five by five blocks. And each of those blocks is going to be a pixel uh, based on what we just created. And each of them is going to have, um, each of them is going to have a color. So you'll see here, we're creating this grid essentially, and it's going to have, uh, it's going to be five by five uh, grid. So we have blue, 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 and then um, five rows as well. This is going to be what we use to create our helicopter. By changing the colors for each one of those squares, we're going to end up with something that looks approximately like a helicopter. Okay. So now that we have that, we need to iterate through it uh, using two uh, loops. And the way we're going to do that was we're going to use a for each loop. First, we're going to put that inside of VStack. Now we're going to create a for each and we need to give a range for each loop. So the range we're going to use is from zero until um, the, how many rows we have and the easier, the easiest way actually here to do it would be to just give a number, um, which is let rows equals five and let columns equals five because that's how many we have. There's a, a different way to do it. This is um, a little bit more cumbersome, but if we just say rows minus one, that'll give us five. Uh, be careful because if you don't do the minus one, it'll actually be six because we're starting to count from zero. Don't forget to do id equals backslash dot self and then um, open the closure and say row in. 
Here, we're going to create a H stack because what we're doing is we're creating each row now. Each row is an H stack, which is going to contain five V stacks. So we're creating an H stack, and then within it, we're going to do another loop for each, and that goes from zero to the number of columns that we have minus one. Again, ID is backslash dot self. And we're going to say call in. And here we're going to create a V stack. Which is going to contain uh, a rectangle. Actually, um, you could either use the pixel that we created or a rectangle. It's actually the same thing. Uh, because all a pixel is is a rectangle um, and we're going to give it a size which is the size that we have up there um, for both the width and the height there we go and so uh, we may need to make sure the size is a CG float instead of an integer And uh, make sure you have self in front of each one, and that should be it. This should give us now a a grid. Oh, uh, let's do a foreground color of um, the actual heli block. So the way we pick the corresponding color is by doing heli blocks uh, square bracket row square bracket column. That way, we're actually picking the color of the corresponding square. So now let's get rid of pixel and do helicopter. And if we go ahead and, um, yep, helicopter, if we go ahead and build this now, we should see a grid of five by five squares, rectangles, which is what we made. So they're all blue because um, that's what we have. And there's an actual padding between them. So we need to make sure the spacing is zero. So for each H stack and V stack, make sure you have the spacing at zero and that way we'll get rid of those spaces between the squares. So if we build it now, we should see a solid blue square. Uh, actually, we're seeing stripes. Uh, we missed uh, one V stack. So if we add V stack, for that V stack, a spacing of zero as well. Now we should see a solid blue block. There we go, perfect. So now all that's left is to change the colors uh, to make it look like a helicopter. And you can play around with this. You can, this is extendable as well. You don't have to stick to five by five. You can go 10 by 10, any, any grid that you want. Uh, obviously the bigger it is, the more complex the shape can be. Here we're just going to kind of go with, um, with uh, green and gray, uh, just because those were the colors in the classic arcade game of the helicopter which we're trying to, uh, which we're using as inspiration here. So here we go, we're kind of starting to see a helicopter if we change the rest to gray, clear, and gray. Maybe that looks like wheels, maybe not. Um, you kind of have to use your imagination, but it's fine. Hopefully uh, the, the point of the tutorial still stands. There is our helicopter and we can use this now to move forward. Okay, so now that we've built our helicopter, all we have to do now is build the third component, which is a obstacle. So we're going to create a new file, a Swift file, call it obstacle, import Swift UI, and it's going to be another struct. It's going to be called obstacle. Again, it's a view, and we need a variable called body, which is some view. And all we're going to do here is it's going to be a rectangle and it's going to have a width and it's going to have a height. So we're going to start by creating, by making the height, you know, let's make it actually the height, the width 20 and the height 200. And we in the body, we create a rectangle with a frame with those dimensions, which are the width and the height. And that is our obstacle now. In the future, when we develop the game, we can add different types of obstacles and we can make the sizes dynamic so we can change the height, the width of these obstacles. 
Uh, but for right now, uh, we're just going to use this one for a simple example. Okay, so now we have all of our different components and it's time for us to start combining them inside the content view. Let's start by creating a Z stack and putting the helicopter and the obstacle inside it. And you'll see soon if we, if we run this, uh, yeah, Z stack, if we, if we run this, um, they're actually going to be on top of each other, but first we're going to act, uh, make a geometry reader, which is going to give us the, um, the size of our screen. So geometry reader, if, um, the way it's used is you say geometry reader, curly bracket geo in or some other variable, I call it geo. Then we can use that in the frame and say, Hey, make the frame the geo that size that width and the height geo that size that height and that's going to take up all the space for that view which geometry reader um, encompasses because we've placed geometry reader at the top there is nothing outside of it it's going to be the whole screen so now that we've used geometry reader to give us the coordinates um, it actually isn't showing the the full because we still have safe uh, safe areas and the obstacle actually is black color. So let's go change the color to green for the obstacle. Um, and if we run it again, we see the obstacle is green now. It's on top of the helicopter, but we'll move it around. We also need to um, fix the, the spacing of the file a little bit. And okay, so let's get started with giving the position of the helicopter and the obstacle. So create a state private variable heli position. It's a CG point because it, uh, we need an X and a Y coordinate. We're going to give the helicopter that position uh, and just say self dot heli position. Oh, um, we need to move that out of the uh, body. Uh, it needs to be outside of the body. That's why it's not working. There we go. If we put it there, it should now work fine. Cool. The helicopter now is using the heli position um, up there, which is 100. Uh, X equals 100. Y equals 100, which would be towards the top left corner. We do the same thing now for the obstacle position and we give it some kind of coordinates uh, towards the right end of the screen. Uh, for example, let's say X equals 1000 and Y equals 300. If we run this now, we'll see that, there we go, it's kind of looking like a game, but we need to f definitely fix the, the black background. It needs to be um, covering the whole screen. and. We need to move the edges ignore safe area down to the geometry reader level and that should now work perfect okay so now that we are uh now that we have our components on here we need to start thinking about doing some uh, movement and we're going to create a couple functions to do this um, the first function we're going to create is called gravity and all it's going to do is take the heli position y coordinate and increment it up or, or in the positive direction, which ironically is towards the bottom of the screen by 50, let's say. And every time this function gets called, the, posi the Y position of the helicopter is going to um, change so that it looks like it's fallen. Then we're going to create another function called obst move, which will move our obstacle from right to left. And the way we do this is say self.obstposition.x minus um, some increment. Let's try with 50 and see how that looks. Okay. So now we need a, a timer to move all of, to, to call on these um, functions, gravity and obstacle move. So we're create a timer which runs every half a second and it's going to be on main and in common. Um, and it's going to need to connect at the end. So we use um, something called um, so we use something called on receive and what we say here is use timer so every time you hear from the timer do something so the thing we're going to do is we're going to run the gravity function so 
if we do self.gravity, every time the timer runs now, it's going to increment the heli helicopter position and it's going to be, um, looks like it's falling. Uh, one thing we need to do is uh, on the timer is auto connect instead of connect at the end. Uh, that's why uh, it's not working. And make sure you use self dot timer instead of just timer. And this should now make our helicopter fall down. There we go. We need to work on making the um, the movement smoother. So the way we do this is uh, say with animation. And this is something that you can use to make the changing of values smoother. So if you say with animation, anything that happens inside it, the numbers will change smoothly over time rather than just jump from value to value. And if we uh, change the timer to be one tenth of a second, this should happen faster and look like a smooth motion now. Cool. So now we need to also um, give now we need to make the helicopter go up instead of just fall down. So the way we're going to do this is add a gesture to the, uh, to the uh, Z stack. And the gesture is going to be a tap gesture. So every time you tap on the screen, the helicopter should go up. And the way we do this is we say self heli, heli position dot Y minus 50. And we can again play with this, but every time you tap the screen, now the Y position will go up by 50 and then it'll keep falling down. As long as um, you keep tapping, it should maintain uh, going up and down. So again, use with animation to make this movement appear smoother. And now the helicopter should look like, yep. It looks like we have to tap a lot for it to go up. So we need to move this to, let's say a hundred. And now it should be, yeah, that's, that's about fine. We, we can fine tune all of these settings later, but for now this will do. Perfect. So now we need to make the obstacle move as well. And we'll follow the exact same strategy here. We say, hey, for the obstacle, grab the position of self that obst position. And on receive uh, for the timer, use the timer. Every time you hear from this timer, then run the uh, function which we created earlier, which was the obstacle movement. So self.opst move, run that every time you hear from the timer. And now the obstacle should move from right to left. There we go. It was all very abrupt. So let's play around with the um, animation to make it all look smooth. And let's maybe change the value to 20 because it seemed to be moving very fast. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. This looks, uh, it's getting closer to an actual game, but um, you see, you only get the obstacle once. So we need to make it so the obstacle returns to the starting point after it exits the screen. And the way we do this is with a simple if statement. So we say, so if the position of the obstacle is greater than zero, which means it's on the screen, keep doing what we've been doing so far, keep moving it to the left. But if it's actually not positive, if it's a negative position, the X uh, coordinate, then we need to reset it. It means it has exited the screen. So we'll reset its position to something like a thousand. So that'll move it back to the right and then it'll keep coming to the left. So the issue we see here is that it actually goes back to the starting point with an animation and we don't want that. So get rid of the with animation uh, at the top and let's add it down here in the actual function. So we want it going from right to left with an animation and looking smooth, but we don't want that on the reset movement. We want the reset movement to happen automatically immediately without an animation. So we're only going to put the animation here and it's going to look like it's going smoothly from right to left and then resets without us seeing it. And so it's perfect. There we go. This is, this is it. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just part one. On the next part, we'll add things like collision detection and more sophisticated animations and more types of obstacles to make it look like a, a closer to a real game. I hope you enjoy this. If you did, please click like and subscribe and uh, come back for more videos.